also known as Sasquatch, is a cryptid in American folklore, alleged to be a simian-like creature that inhabits forests, especially those of the Pacific Northwest. Bigfoot is usually described as a large, hairy, bipedal humanoid. Scientists discount the existence of Bigfoot and consider it to be a culmination of folklore, misidentification, or a hoax, rather than a living animal. They note the lack of physical evidence and the fact that numerous creatures would have to exist in order to maintain a breeding population. A small group of investigators are sustained in their interest by occasional new reports of sightings. Such reports are often attributed to various animals, particularly black bears. Individuals claim to have seen Bigfoot, describing it as a large, hairy, muscular, bipedal, ape-like creature. Roughly six to nine feet tall, covered in hair described as black, dark brown, or dark reddish. Some descriptions include details such as large eyes, a pronounced brow ridge, and a large low-set forehead. The top of the head has been described as rounded and crested, similar to the sagittal crest of the male gorilla. The creature has been reported as having a strong, unpleasant odor. The enormous footprints for which the creature is named are claimed to be as large as 24 inches long and 8 inches wide. Some footprint casts have also contained claw marks, making it likely that they came from known animals such as bears, which have five toes and claws. Proponents of Bigfoot's existence claim that the creature is omnivorous and mainly nocturnal. About one-third of all claims of Bigfoot sightings are located in the Pacific Northwest, with the remaining reports spread throughout the rest of North America. Most reports are considered mistakes or hoaxes, even by those researchers who say that Bigfoot exists. Bigfoot has become well-known and a phenomenon in popular culture, and sightings have spread throughout North America. Ruler areas of the Great Lake region and southeastern United States have been sources of numerous reports of Bigfoot sightings, in addition to the Pacific Northwest. Both Bigfoot believers and non-believers agree that many of the reported sightings are hoaxes or misidentified animals. Some Bigfoot proponents believe that Bigfoot could be a relic population of Gigantopithecus, all Gigantopithecus fossils were found in Asia, but according to studies, many species of animals migrated across the Bering Land Bridge, and it's suggested that Gigantopithecus might have done so as well. Gigantopithecus fossils have not been found in the Americas. The only recovered fossils are of mandibles and teeth, leaving uncertainty about Gigantopithecus's migration to the Americas. There are many theories on what Bigfoot may or may not be. Some of the suggestions of independent researchers suggest that Bigfoot might be an interdimensional creature, having the ability to exist within our third dimension and to also exist at times within the unseen realm of the fourth dimension, having the ability to choose when and who it wants to manifest itself to. Just as a college graduate can master all grade levels beneath them, kindergarten through 12th grade, can Bigfoot master all dimensional levels beneath it, dimension 1 through the 4th? And if so, would this account for many alleged Bigfoot encounters where one has a strange feeling they are being watched and where the creature can be heard, smelled, but not seen? And would this also account for why the creature can elude trail cams and is rarely captured on image? In the Native American nations, there are well over 80 different names attributed to Bigfoot, 
Some of these Native American names translate to Bushman, Big Elder Brother, Night People, The Trickster, Hairy Savage, The Giants, Woodman, Tree Man, and Spirit Hidden by Woods. It seems the more deeper one digs into the Bigfoot phenomenon, the stranger it gets. There have been several reports of UFOs seen in the vicinity of Bigfoot. The earliest clues date back to 1888, when a cattleman described an encounter with friendly Indians in Humboldt County, California. They led him to a cave where he saw a hefty humanoid creature covered in long, shiny black hair with no neck sitting cross-legged. One Indian told him three of these crazy bears have been casted out of a small moon that dropped from the sky and landed. The moon then ascended back into the air, so it's highly likely that the crazy bears were Bigfoots and the moon was a spacecraft. Author Wesley H. Bateman believes that the extraterrestrials are responsible for the presence of the Bigfoot race upon our planet. In his 1993 book entitled Knowledge from the Stars, he writes in chapter 1 that there are two types of Sasquatch. The first type being those that are mutated survivors or descendants of mutated survivors of a crashed spaceship. The second type being those that were deliberately marooned here on Earth for the sake of biological experimentation. The Patterson-Gimlin film is an American motion picture of an alleged creature which the filmmakers have claimed was Bigfoot. The footage was shot October 20th, 1967 in Northern California alongside Bluff Creek and has since been subjected to many attempts to authenticate or debunk it. The filmmakers were Roger Patterson and Robert Gimlin. Patterson died of cancer in 1972 and maintained right to the end that the creature on the film was real. Patterson's friend Gimlin has always denied being involved in any part of a hoax with Patterson. Gimlin mostly avoided publicly discussing the subject until around 2005 when he began giving interviews and appearing at Bigfoot conferences. Yeti, a abominable snowman, is an ape-like entity taller than the average human that is said to inhabit the Himalayan regions of Nepal, Tibet, and surrounding areas. The name Yeti is commonly used by the people indigenous to the region and are part of their history and mythology. Stories of the Yeti first emerged as a faucet of Western popular culture in the 19th century. In 1832, James Princep's Journal of the Asiatic Society of Bengal published Trekker B. H. Hodgson's account of his experiences in northern Nepal. His local guides spotted a tall, bipedal creature covered with long, dark hair which seemed to flee in fear. Hodgson's concluded it was an orangutan. Western interest in the Yeti peaked dramatically in the 1950s. While attempting to scale Mount Everest in 1951, explorer Eric Shipton took photographs of a number of large prints in the snow at about 20,000 feet above sea level. These photos have been subject to intense scrutiny and debate. Some argue they are the best evidence of Yeti's existence, while others contend the prints are those of a mundane creature that have been distorted by the melting snow. The Skunk Ape also known as the Swamp Ape, Stink Ape, or Florida Bigfoot, is a hominid cryptid said to inhabit the North American states of Florida, North Carolina, and Arkansas. 
although reports from Florida are most common. It is named for its appearance and for the unpleasant odor that is said to accompany it. Reports of the skunk ape were mostly common in the 1960s and 1970s. In 1974, sightings of a large, foul-smelling, hairy, ape-like creature which ran upright on two legs were reported in the suburban neighborhoods of Dade County, Florida. Skeptics believe the reports may represent sightings of a black bear and that it is likely that the other sightings were hoaxes or misidentification of wildlife. The United States National Park Services considers the skunk ape to be a hoax. In 2000, two photographs said to be of the skunk ape were taken by an anonymous woman and mailed to the Sheriff's Department of Sarasota County, Florida. The photographs were accompanied by a letter from the woman in which she claimed to have photographed an ape in her backyard. The woman wrote that on three different nights an ape had entered her backyard to take apples left on her back porch. In Arkansas folklore, the Falk Monster, also known as the Southern Sasquatch, is said to have been seen in Falk in Miller County, Arkansas during the early 1970s. The creature was accused of attacking a local family. Initial sightings of the creature were concentrated in the Jonesville, Boggy Creek area, where it was blamed for the destruction of local livestock. Later sightings were made several hundred miles to the north and the east of Falk. Various reports between 1971 and 1974 describe the creature as being a large, hominid-like creature covered in long, dark hair, which is estimated to be about 7 feet tall with a weight of 250 to 300 pounds. Witnesses said that its chest was about 3 feet wide. Later reports published during the early 80s claimed it was far larger, with one report describing it as 10 feet tall with an estimated weight of 800 pounds. Some accounts describe the Falk Monster as running swiftly with a galloping gait and swinging its arms in a fashion similar to a monkey. Reports also describe it as having a terrible odor, the odor being described as a combination of a skunk and a wet dog, and as having bright eyes about the size of silver dollars that shine red. A variety of tracks and claw marks have been discovered which are claimed to belong to the creature. One set of footprints reportedly measured 17 inches in length and 7 inches wide, while another appeared to show the creature only to have three toes. The Dewey Lake Monster is the name given to a legendary creature said to be approximately 10 feet tall and weighing about 500 pounds, which first gained wide notoriety in June 1964 after several reported sightings near Dewey Lake in Dewey Michigan. It is also referred to as the Michigan Bigfoot and Sister Lake Sasquatch. According to legend, the creature was rumored to dwell primarily along a 15-mile stretch of swampland, extending from the Sister Lakes toward Decatur, Michigan. In 1964, the tale gained national attention and caused a flood of curious thrill-seekers and monster hunters to besiege the local community in the summer of 1964, some of whom offered photographs and plaster casts that were claimed to be footprints of the creature. Former Cass County Sheriff Paul Parrish was quoted as saying, it was one of the strangest times in his 33 years of southwestern Michigan law enforcement. He added, we investigated it long and hard but were never able to come up with whatever it was. 
but some good, honest, legitimate people reported it. In Ohio folklore, there is the Grassman, also known as the Ohio Grassman. It is an entity said to dwell in the grasslands of the state. According to the sighting reports around Cuyahoga Valley National Park, north of the Akron area, the Grassman is described as a Bigfoot-type creature that is seven feet tall, weighing in around 300 pounds. Momo is the name of the local legend similar to Bigfoot, which is reported to live in Missouri. The name Momo is short for Missouri Monster and is reported to have a large, pumpkin-shaped head, a furry body which resembles shag carpet and hair covering the eyes. Momo was first reported in 1971 near Louisiana, Missouri and up and down the Mississippi River with later sightings documented further west by travel of waterways. It is supposedly a large, seven-foot tall, hairy, black, man-like creature that emits a terrible odor. Sightings in 1972 lasted for only around two weeks. Tracks were found and submitted to Lawrence Curtis, director of the Oklahoma City Zoo and Botanical Gardens. He deemed the tracks to be that of an unknown primate species. Other regional Bigfoot creatures are the beast known as Sheep Squatch in Hardingsburg, Kentucky, a creature known as the Big Muddy Monster in Murfreesboro, Illinois, the Sykesville Monster in Maryland, a Bigfoot-like creature known as the Wild Man in Rockwood, Tennessee, the Spotsville Monster of Kentucky, the Minerva Monster of Ohio, and the Westmoreland Monster of Pennsylvania. Is it possible that all these descriptive sightings are nothing more than different regional names for the same creature we call Bigfoot? Independent researchers claim that the Sasquatch leave physical evidence of their presence in locations where they have been sighted. The stated evidence includes rock stacks, snapped trees, and bizarre formations created from wooden sticks all the way to huge wooden logs. It is also stated that the Sasquatch socially communicate to each other through a series of noises created by cracking rocks together, banging trees with wood, or verbally communicating through a series of extended whoop-like sounds. In 1972, at a Sierra Nevada camp in California, field researchers Al Berry and Ron Moorhead captured audio recordings of what they believed to be communication sounds made by an alleged Sasquatch. These captured sounds underwent a year-long evaluation at the University of Wyoming. The researchers determined the origin of these sounds to be primate and that one of the speakers possessed a vocal range and lung capacity much greater than the average humans. A Wentworth College professor and former U.S. Navy cryptolinguist Scott Nelson determined that the captured sounds feature an actual deliberate language. In the North American continent, many reports of Bigfoot encounters have been documented in newspaper articles dating back as far as the early 1800s. Most of the early reports tell of a large, seven foot tall hairy ape-like wild man that walks upright on two legs. Most often, farmers report missing livestock in the vicinity where the wild man has been seen. American pioneer Daniel Boone told tales of killing a ten foot hairy giant he called a yahoo, says John MacFarriger, 
in a 1992 biography of Boone entitled The Life and Legend of an American Pioneer. It is believed by some independent researchers that the population of the Bigfoot species in North America could be well over 2,000. Thus, the reason for so many sightings of this creature all over the country. Sightings so numerous that the creature had adopted multiple names such as The Stone Man of West Virginia The Skookum Monster of the Mount St. Helens region of Washington State The Wood Booger of the Mid-Appalachian Mountains the Lockridge Monster of Jefferson County, Iowa. The Coal Hollow Road Monster in Central Illinois. Old Yellow Top sighted in the town of Cobalt, Ontario, Canada. The Yahoo or Yeho of West Virginia. The White Bigfoot of Pennsylvania in the town of Blakeslee and the Honey Island Swamp Monster of Louisiana. In October 5, 1958, near Bluff Creek, California, construction foreman Jerry Crew found tracks alongside his Caterpillar tractor when he arrived for work on the construction of a road. Crew noticed what looked like a series of footprints that had formed a continuous track to around and then away from the machine. The newly scraped roadbed was covered with soft areas of mud mixed with patches of loose shale. The footprints were of a naked human shaped foot and measured 16 inches long. Ray's brother Wilbur Wallace was also working on this job. He had seen the tracks many times and had witnessed many other startling occurrences. It was reported to him by his men that a nearly full 55-gallon drum of diesel fuel which had been left standing beside the road was missing and that Bigfoot tracks led down the road from a steep bank to a place where it had stood, then crossed the road, continued down the hill and finally went over the lower bank away into the bush. Wilbur Wallace found the tracks exactly as the men had stated and he also found the oil drum at the bottom of a steep bank about 175 feet from the road. It had rolled down this bank after having been thrown from the top. What is more, it had been lifted from its original resting place and apparently carried to this point for there were no marks in the soft mud indicating that it had been either rolled or dragged. Second, a length of 18 inch galvanized steel culvert disappeared from a dump overnight and was found at the bottom of another bank some distance away. Third, a tire for a carry-all earth mover weighing over 250 pounds had likewise been in part carried and in part rolled a quarter of a mile down the road and hurled into a deep ravine. The cast by Jerry Crew of the Bluff Creek Bigfoot measured 16 inches and are completely human except that the toes are relatively small, somewhat rounder, and are arranged more squarely to the long axis of the feet than in the average human being. In 1990, a 911 phone call was made from a house in Kitsap Peninsula, Washington State. The caller was very distraught and complained of someone or something crawling around outside the house. He described the creature as six foot nine, standing up and being a big, really big person. Okay. You've had 
had problems in the neighborhood before? Yeah, my dog was killed here just recently. I don't know what it was, whatever it is, it's running. I couldn't catch it if I was going to chase it. But whatever it was, it was standing up. I'm out here looking through the window now and I don't see anything. I don't want to go outside. Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? See ya! Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. Okay, hang on. He's right... Is he in your yard, sir? Yeah, God, he's big. Okay, what's he doing in your yard? He's looking at me. Oh, and the guy is on foot. Is... I don't know what... It, it, it's, it's a big, real big person. That's all I can say. Okay, but it is a, it is a person. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it was a person or somebody really big. But he's all in black. He's... Is he a black male or a white male? Did you actually see whether... Or was he just wearing black? He's all black and he's big. He is big. The Pennsylvania White Bigfoot was first sighted in Blakeslee, Pennsylvania in 1970. According to eyewitness Annette B., the creature stood between six and seven feet tall with a broad chest, a long neck, and a coat of dirtied white fur. Its eyes were dark and spaced far apart. Its hair covered the lower half of its face there was pinkish skin around the eyes and forehead. It looked like its hair was a little longer on its head and hanging over its forehead above the eyes. On September 27, 1973, in Beaver County, Pennsylvania, two girls were standing outside around 9.30 p.m. They suddenly noticed an eight-foot tall creature covered in white fur with red glowing eyes, carrying a large glowing orb. The creature then ran off into the woods. The girls ran hysterically into the house. The father of one of the girls went into the woods to investigate, searching for the creature. Later that year, a UFO lands near Uniontown, Pennsylvania. At the same time, Two Bigfoot creatures are sighted out in the pasture. A woman fires her shotgun at a Bigfoot creature and it disappears out of sight. A luminous UFO hovered over the woods nearby. In August 1976, three teenage friends were driving on an isolated stretch of road somewhere in the outer Rondacks of upstate New York when they came across a hairy, Bigfoot-like creature. It stood around seven feet tall and covered in hair. They referred to it as a beast. Moments later, Bear Road was swarming with local and state police. Many of them recounted sightings of the creature. As the weeks and months passed, more individuals came forward with their own sightings. The Bear incident became the impetus for a rash of sightings around the town of Whitehall that continue to this very day. Today, Whitehall is frequently referred to as the Bigfoot capital of the East Coast. Willow Creek settled in the early 1800s as the town of China Flat. It became a gold rush supply center for the Northern Sierra Mines. A post-World War II boom brought lumber mills and logging companies into the area with a demand so high for local timber that mills ran 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for several decades through the 70s. Willow Creek's Bigfoot lore is rooted in Native American storytelling and sighting reports. The story goes that a huge, man-like creature and his family dwelled in the Bluff Creek area along the Klamath River. The earliest known reports of this man-animal was possibly recorded in Crescent City around 1886. There were numerous reports from the area between Willow Creek and Happy Camp of a large, human-like creature 
seven to eight feet tall and weighing from 350 to 800 pounds. These creatures were reported to be men-like with a light covering of hair on their bodies. These prehistoric looking man-apes faded away for many years only to appear again in 1935 when huge tracks were found in the snow on a nearby mountain. In 1958, in the Bluff Creek area, an entire new epic of Bigfoot had begun. Heavy equipment was moved, loaded drums were tossed about, footprints were everywhere, and workers were followed through the dense underbrush by foul-smelling creatures. In 1960, there were sightings by reliable people, and over 50 sightings had taken place since that time. Perhaps the most talked about encounter happened in 1967 in a nearby canyon of Bluff Creek where the infamous Patterson-Gimlin video was shot, showing what appears to be an adult Bigfoot crossing the creek bank. In 1960, the town of Willow Creek launched the Bigfoot Days Celebration, which continues to be held every Labor Day weekend. In 2000, the town opened the Bigfoot Museum. The museum is a permanent exhibition located within the Willow Creek China Flat Museum, which displays exhibits about the history of the region. Several local Willow Creek businesses adorn their establishments with the enigmatic Bigfoot theme that people literally come from around the world to visit. Painted Rock is located on the Tule River Native American Reservation above Porterville in the Sierra Nevada foothills of Central California. This site is a rock shelter associated with the Native American Yokuts village. The site, located immediately adjacent to the Tule River, includes bedrock mortars, pitted boulders, midden, and pictographs. The pictographs are located within the rock shelter and are painted on the ceiling and walls of the shelter. The pictographs include paintings of a male female and child Bigfoot, known as the family, amongst other paintings of mammals, humans, insects, reptilians, amphibians, and various lines, circles, and other geometric designs. The paintings are in red, black, white, and yellow. It is estimated that the paintings are likely 500 to 1,000 years old. This rock art site is unique, not only because it contains a Bigfoot pictograph, but also because of the traditional Native American stories that accompany it. There are no other known creation stories involving a Bigfoot-like creature in California. As far as can be determined, there are no Bigfoot creation stories anywhere else in the West. There is also no evidence of any other Bigfoot pictographs. Most states, including California, keep a database of all recorded sites located on federal, state, county, city, or private land. Based on that information, there is no other known Bigfoot pictographs or petroglyphs anywhere in California, Washington, Oregon, Nevada, or Ohio. Bigfoot also appears to have some known behaviors that have resulted in Native American Yokuts women changing how they perform work. Here is one story, food stealing. In the old days, women learned never to leave their acorn meal unattended. They would spend all day pounding on the big rocks near the river, 
making the acorn meal, and then take it down to the river to leach it. They would then leave it in the sun to dry, but when they would come back, it would be gone. They would find big footprints in the sand where they left the meal, and they knew that the hairy man took it. He likes Indian food and knows to wait until the acorn is leached of all its bitterness before taking it. We always wondered if he liked the sound of women pounding acorn and knew when to come and get food. Stories of an ape-like creature roaming the forests of North America have been around since the time of the early Native American tribes. Several early cave paintings depicting a large ape-like creature have been found. However, the earliest written account was made in 1811 by David Thompson, who was mapping regions of Canada and the United States of America during the time. Thompson spoke to the Spokans, a local Native American tribe in Washington State. According to Thompson, the Spokans told him of a race of hairy giants that lived in one of the nearby mountains that would steal salmon and people while they were asleep. This was also the first time a footprint was mentioned for a Bigfoot. Thompson said that the giants left footprints one and a half feet long. In 1924, near Toba Inlet, British Columbia, Albert Ostman, a lumberjack, and tough woodsman went for a vacation. Ostman had heard stories about the man-beasts who supposedly roam these woods, but refused to believe them. As Ostman lay asleep one evening, a Sasquatch purportedly picked him up and carried him off while he was in his sleeping bag. Ostman was carried in his sleeping bag across country for three hours by the Sasquatch. The Sasquatch dropped Ostman down on a plateau. Standing around him was a family of four of the creatures. Albert was kept captive by the Sasquatch. The captors were three adults and a child, which held Ostman captive for six days. One of the Bigfoots was reported as being eight feet tall. Ostman did not use his gun on them as they had done him no harm. He stayed with the Bigfoot family for one week. Ostman ate sweet tasting grass that they gave him. According to Ostman, the female Sasquatch washed and stacked leaves. Albert escaped by making the large male Sasquatch groggy by feeding him some snuff. He did not tell his story for more than 24 years after it had happened for fear of being thought of as crazy. As more Sasquatch stories appeared in the press, Albert decided to tell his story to a local newspaper in 1957. Arguably, the biggest form of evidence we have of Bigfoot are the tracks they leave across North America. They are typically 15 to 17 inches long and about 30% wider than typical human footprints. The first documented discovery was in the cold winter of 1811 in Alberta, Canada, when David Thompson discovered a large set of footprints in the Rockies impacted deep in the snow. Thompson was convinced that the tracks he found did not belong to a bear. Footprints were discovered almost daily in the logging area of Bluff Creek, California during the 1950s. It was here that the first Bigfoot print was cast and Bigfoot was brought to the media. However, Bluff Creek wasn't the only place that these tracks were found. By 1980, there were over 200 reports of footprints from Northern California alone. 
in 1969, a trail of over 1,000 footprints leading through the snow was discovered in Bossburg, Washington. The tracks were 17 inches long and gave researchers the indication that there was a crippling deformity on the right foot. This analysis has given the Bossburg Bigfoot the name Cripplefoot. In 1982, prints were discovered by the U.S. Forest Service in the state of Washington that appeared to possess dermal ridges and sweat pores. The footprints were found similar to that of a primate. After much analysis, many researchers have concluded that these could not have been faked. Big footprints are still being discovered every day across North America. The Yirin, often referred to as the Chinese wild man or mad monkey, is a legendary creature said to reside in the remote mountains and forests of China, in the western region of Hubei. It has reddish brown hair and is usually six to eight feet tall. The Yirin has a head shaped more similar to humans than other apes, with a sunken face, protruding lips, and large horse-like teeth. It has a bulbous nose with upturned nostrils. It is smaller than the North American Sasquatch. Like Bigfoot, the Yaren is peaceful and will quietly walk away when encountering people. Although the Yaren are generally thought of as peaceful creatures, a woman in Sichuan Province, China, claimed to have been kidnapped and repeatedly raped. By a urine. In 1871, near western Washington state, a 17 year old girl named Serafina Long claimed she was abducted by a Bigfoot. As the story goes, Serafina was outside when all of a sudden she was approached by the Bigfoot. The creature picked her up and carried her away into the nearby woods. Once they were deep in the forest, the Bigfoot covered her eyes with pine pitch so she could not see. The Bigfoot then took Seraphine to a cave where other Bigfoot were lurking. As far as Seraphine knew, these other Bigfoot were the family of the one who took her. For a year, Seraphine was held captive by these Bigfoot. She was now the property of the Bigfoot who took her from her home. Seraphine said that the Bigfoot was very kind to her and that there was a mutual love between them, but she found the life of a Bigfoot to be very difficult. As the year went on, Seraphine started to become sick. Eventually, she became pregnant carrying the baby of the Bigfoot. The Bigfoot that had taken Seraphine once again covered her eyes with pine pitch, picked her up, and brought her to the edge of the woods where he first had taken her. He had set her free, allowing her to return to her people. Seraphine was very excited to be home and her family was just as excited to have her back. Seraphine was so excited that she went into labor. That night, Seraphine Long gave birth to a human Bigfoot hybrid. The baby only lived for a few hours before passing away. The story of Seraphine Long was first told to the world by J.W. Burns, who was looking for evidence of a creature that roamed the mountains of western Washington state. When Seraphina told her story to J.W. Burns, she was well into her 70s. Seraphine Long passed away not long after telling her story to Burns. 
Seraphine Long isn't the only person to have claimed to give birth to a Bigfoot baby. A woman in Sichuan Province, China, claimed to have been kidnapped and raped repeatedly by a Yeren, which is the Chinese equivalent of the North American primate we call Bigfoot. The woman claimed that after being repeatedly raped by the Yeren, it had then abandoned her and she went back to her village. Nine months later, she gave birth to a boy. His head and jaw looked ape-like. His arms were extremely long. His head sat right on top of his shoulders and he seemed to have no neck. His shoulders were very wide. He never learned to speak any language, but he could understand what was said to him. Eventually, he died at age 33. The Almus, a Mongolian word for wild man, is a purported hominid cryptozoological species reputed to inhabit the Caucasus and Pamir Mountains of Central Asia and the Altai Mountains of Southern Mongolia. The Almus is generally considered to be more akin to wild people in appearance and habits than to apes, in contrast to the Sasquatch of North America. The Almus are typically described as a human-like bipedal creature between five and seven feet tall. Their feet are large, their fingers are long, and their body is completely covered with reddish-brown hair, except for their hands. They appear to have anthropomorphic facial features, including a head that rises to a cone-shaped peak and a slanting forehead with a pronounced brow ridge. They have a flat nose, a large protruding jaw, and teeth like a man's, but with larger canines. Many cryptozoologists believe that there is a similarity between the Alma and how Neanderthals might have appeared. In 1850, an alleged female Alma named Zana was captured in an isolated mountain village in the Caucasus region. She was at first violent towards her captors, but soon became domesticated and assisted with simple household tasks. Zana is said to have had sexual relations with a man of the village and gave birth to a number of children, apparently normal in human appearance. Several of these children, however, died in infancy. The surviving children, two boys and two girls, were assimilated into normal society, married, and had families of their own. Zana herself died in 1890. Yowie is one of several names for an Australian entity reputed to live in the outback of Australia. The creature has its roots in Aboriginal oral history and is common in Australian and Aboriginal legends, particularly in the Eastern Australian states. The Yowie is usually described as a hairy, ape-like creature standing upright between six and nine feet tall. They have two large fang-like canine teeth and its nose is described as wide and flat. It usually has brown or reddish fur. The Yowie's feet are described as much larger than a human's, but alleged Yaoi tracks are inconsistent in shape and toe number. Some report the Yaoi is timid or shy, while others describe the Yaoi as sometimes violent or aggressive. Some recently reported Yaoi incidents claim that the death and mutilation of household pets, such as dogs, are the result of Yowie attacks. Other people claim that the animal's deaths 
can be attributed to attacks by wild animals such as dingoes. The Orang Pendek is a mostly ground-dwelling bipedal primate that is covered in short fur and stands between three and five feet tall. The name Oran Pendek translates to short person in Indonesian. It reportedly inhabits the remote mountains and forests of the island of Sumatra. It is said to be covered with gray to brown fur with other reports telling of a color of fur that varies between blackish, golden, yellow, and orange. It is described as having broad shoulders, a huge chest and upper abdomen, and powerful arms. The local villagers state that the animal is so strong it can uproot small trees and break rattan vines. Its legs are short and slim and the feet are small. The head slopes back to a distinct crest similar to the gorilla and there appears to be a bony ridge above the eyes. The mouth is small and the eyes are set wide apart with the nose being distinctively humanoid. When frightened, the animal exposes its long canine teeth. Sightings by locals often take place in farmland or on the edge of the forest where the orang pendek is allegedly seen walking through fields and raiding crops of corn, potatoes, and fruit. It is largely herbivorous and sometimes seen in trees. The local villagers with experience in the forests claim that the orang pendek seeks out ginger root, insects in rotting logs, and river crabs. The durian fruit is also thought to be a favorite of this creature. The orang pendek's reported physical characteristics differentiate it from any other species of animal known to inhabit the area. All witnesses describe it as an ape or human-like animal. Its bipedality, fur coloring, and southerly location on the island make orangutans an unlikely explanation. And its bipedality, size, and other physical characteristics make gibbons the only apes known to inhabit the area, also an unlikely explanation as well. Many therefore propose that the orang pendek could represent a new genius of primate or new species or subspecies of orangutan or gibbons monkey. From a scientific point of view, the evidence that does exist supporting the survival of such a large, prehistoric, ape-like creature has been attributed to hoaxes or delusion, rather than to sightings of a genuine creature. In a 1996 USA Today article, Washington State zoologist John Crane said, There is no such thing as Bigfoot. No data other than material that's clearly been fabricated has ever been presented. In addition, scientists cite the fact that the Bigfoot is alleged to live in regions unusual for a large non-human primate. All recognized apes are found in the tropics of Africa and Asia. Mainstream scientists do not consider the subject of Bigfoot an area of credible science, and there have been limited number of formal scientific studies of Bigfoot. Evidence, such as the 1967 Patterson-Gimlin film, have proven no supportive data of any scientific value. As with other similar beings, climate and food supply issues would make such a creature's survival in reported habitats unlikely. Great apes have not been found in the fossil records in the Americas, and no Bigfoot remains are known to have been found. Phillips Stevens, a cultural anthropologist at the University of Buffalo, summarized the scientific consensus 
as follows. It defies all logic that there is a population of these things sufficient to keep them going. What it takes to maintain any species, especially a long-lived species, is you gotta have a breeding population that requires a substantial number spread out over a fairly wide area where they could find sufficient food and shelter to keep hidden from all the investigators. In the 1970s, when Bigfoot experts were frequently given high-profile media coverage, the scientific community generally avoided lending credence to the theories by debating them. There is one academic scientist who has gone to great lengths researching the Bigfoot phenomenon. He has approached the subject with a very objective and professional manner in order to cultivate proper credibility on the subject. His name is Jeffrey Meldrum. He is a leading academic expert on the subject of Sasquatch. He is a professor of anatomy and anthropology and a professor of the Department of Anthropology at Idaho State University. Meldrum is also a professor of occupational and physical therapy. He is an expert on foot morphology and locomotion in primates. In his office, you can find over 200 molds of Sasquatch footprints taken from all over North America. He states the molds, some 16 inches or larger, indicate creatures more than seven feet tall and weighing around 700 pounds are lurking in North America. His office contains hair samples of deer, bear, and other wild animals to compare to alleged Bigfoot samples. Meldrum brought attention to the subject of Bigfoot with his 2006 book, Sasquatch, Legend Meets Science. Around 13,000 copies of the book have been sold. Meldrum is certain Sasquatch lives. He claims Bigfoot is a solitary creature with a lifespan of at least 20 years, rarely reproduces, and finds remote places to curl up and die. Meldrum has attracted media attention due to his interest in Bigfoot. Skeptic Brian Dunning writes that the work of responsible scientists like Dr. Meldrum is exactly what true skeptics should be asking the Bigfoot community for, not criticizing him for it. Meldrum has appeared on TV over 20 times and has been featured in national magazines and newspapers. He's estimated he's been the subject of over 150 interviews since 1996 when he investigated his first set of footprints in Walla Walla, Washington State. When he arrived, he was expecting a hoax. Instead, he found tracks that were too big to be human. This left an impression which indicated that too much flexing was present in the footprints to have been made by a prosthetic foot pressed into the landscape. He's been hunting the creature ever since. Whether or not you believe in the reality of the creature we call Bigfoot, one thing is for certain. The legend of this enigmatic creature has most definitely found a place in our modern day society. Several fiction and nonfiction books have been written about the creature. Stories of Bigfoot and its image can be found throughout American pop culture, including documentaries, entertaining movies and TV shows, and consumer products, as well as apparel and jewelry. Many North American states celebrate Bigfoot with annual festivals and parades. 
with all the recent attention that has been directed towards the Bigfoot phenomenon through social media and TV within the past 20 years, many have now become more comfortable in coming forth, willing to share their experiences involving encounters with the Bigfoot creature without ridicule. Is Bigfoot a multi-dimensional creature? Has its presence been covered up by covert authorities due to its connection with unidentified flying objects or the possibility that Bigfoot could be an extraterrestrial itself? Or is Bigfoot the missing link that completes our evolutionary progression to present day humanity? Is this elusive creature an undiscovered primate awaiting its discovery? Is it possible that this creature is a secluded remnant of an ancient species of human that has cleverly eluded our present day detection? Or is Bigfoot just a legend, a myth, or some fascinating figment of humanity's imagination to satisfy our curiosity for the unknown? These are questions that may never be answered in our lifetime. But one thing is certain. In this lifetime or another, one will eventually progress to the path of self-discovery. Releasing the unnecessary old program thought forms that they have carried since childhood. Programs that were taught to them by mainstream society. These old program thought forms are nothing more than well-meant deceptive rhetoric that inadvertently closes one's mind to anything outside the controlled social standards that were set by governments and religions. When one's thoughts are their own, free from mainstream social bias and control, many avenues of perception and understanding become apparent that have been previously unknown. Expanding one's consciousness, comparison to a level of seeing everything from a mountaintop as compared to seeing very little from the ground. When this level of perception has been upheld by mainstream society, then and only then will we find the ultimate definitive proof. We will finally find the elusive enigma we call Bigfoot in the forest.